Hi, I'm Hannah. Before I dive into my story, please remember to like and subscribe for more. All right, let's get into it. I never thought something as mundane as a car could kickstart a war. But there I was, staring at the empty spot where my car should have been. I remember feeling my heart drop, thinking it was stolen, until I got the call. Your vehicle's been towed, said the voice on the other end, sounding as bored as someone who's done this a thousand times. Towed? But I didn't park it illegally. Well, ma'am, it was parked in a no-parking zone on Fifth Avenue. I froze. I hadn't driven there. But someone else had. Rushing back home, my mind was racing faster than my feet. There he was, sprawled on the couch, video game controller in hand, acting like he owned the world. Alex, did you use my car last night? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. Oh yeah, had to meet some friends downtown. Why? You parked it illegally. It's been towed. He shrugged, pausing his game. Calm down, Hannah. It's just a car. Just a car? Alex, that's my lifeline. I need it for work. He rolled his eyes. You're always so dramatic. Just get it back. And that was it. No apology, no offer to help. Nothing. The next day was a nightmare. I had to take two buses and a train to get to the impound lot. The fees were like a slap in the face. A whole week's worth of groceries. Gone. I thought about confronting Alex again demanding he pay, but I knew it was pointless. He'd just brush it off like he always did. I felt helpless, watching my hard-earned money pay for his carelessness. That night, I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling. Something inside me snapped. No more Miss Nice Sister. It was high time Alex learned that actions have consequences. That was just the start of my journey of setting things right. One towed car at a time. You know, most people ask before they borrow things especially cars. Oh, are we still on that? You got your car back, right? It's not just about the car, Alex. It's about respect, responsibility. You can't just take things without asking. He took a bite, unconcerned. You're overreacting. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal? I had to pay to get my car back because of your stupidity. Hey, watch it, he snapped. It's not my fault the cops are uptight about parking. That's it? That's your excuse? I was incredulous. You're unbelievable, he shrugged. Whatever, Hannah. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. A mountain out of a molehill? I couldn't believe his audacity. I left the kitchen, my mind racing with ways to teach him a lesson he'd never forget. Later, I sat down with my laptop, scrolling through ideas. How do you teach someone a lesson about responsibility? Community service? Nah, too cliche. A heart-to-heart -heart talk? Definitely not Alex's style. Then, it hit me. Alex was planning a weekend trip with his friends. What if something unexpected happened? I picked up my phone and called his friend Mike. Luckily, Mike was always more responsible than Alex. Hey Mike, it's Hannah, Alex's sister. Listen, I need a favor. Sure, what's up? I need you to cancel the trip this weekend. Tell Alex something came up. There was a pause. Is everything okay? Just trust me on this. It's important. All right, I'll do it. But you owe me one. I grinned. Deal. The next day, I watched as Alex got the news. His face fell, and he started pacing, obviously frustrated. What do you mean you can't go? We've been planning this for weeks. Mike's voice was calm but firm. Something came up, man. I can't make it. This is bullshit. For the next few days, he was like a bear with a sore head. He moped around, complaining about his ruined plans. But something was different. He started doing small things around the house, washing his dishes, taking out the trash. It was like the canceled trip flicked a switch in his brain. One evening, as we were watching TV, he turned to me. You know, I've been thinking. Maybe I've been a bit... irresponsible. A bit? He chuckled. Okay, more than a bit. I'm sorry about the car thing. I'll pay you back for the towing. I stared at him, shocked. Was this really happening? Was he actually learning his lesson? It felt like a small victory, but I knew this was just the beginning. Teaching Alex to be responsible was going to be a long road. But for now, I'll take the win. Small steps, right? The change in Alex after the canceled trip was a good start, but not enough. I knew I needed to up the ante. He had to truly understand the inconvenience he'd caused me. And I had just the plan for it. One thing Alex loved more than his car was his gaming console. He was practically glued to it. So, I thought... What if it suddenly went missing? 
Late one evening, when Alex was out, I went to his room. The console sat there, smug in its importance. I unplugged it, carefully hiding it in the back of my closet. The next day, Alex's reaction was predictable. Where's my console? His voice echoed with a mix of confusion and irritation. I haven't seen it, I replied, feigning innocence. Maybe you misplaced it? He tore the living room apart, frustration mounting with every passing second. I could see the irritation in his eyes, the same irritation I had felt when my car was towed. After a fruitless search, he collapsed on the couch, defeated. This is ridiculous. It can't just vanish. Things disappear all the time, Alex. Like my car, remember? I couldn't resist the jab. He shot me a glare but didn't respond. But that wasn't all. Alex was big on social media, always scrolling, posting, living for likes and comments. So I took a little technological venture and temporarily disabled his social media accounts. The next morning I found him staring at his phone in disbelief. Can you believe it? My accounts have been hacked or something. I can't access any of them. That's rough, I said, keeping my face neutral. Did you contact support? Yeah, but they're saying it could take days to resolve. The frustration was clear in his voice the same kind of frustration I felt dealing with the tow company. Over the next few days, Alex was a mess. No gaming, no social media. He was forced to find other ways to occupy his time, and something incredible happened. He started reading a book I had left on the coffee table. He even helped out with chores without being asked. I observed him, a mix of satisfaction and surprise swirling inside me. Was my plan actually working? A week later, I found the gaming console in a misplaced box in the garage. His relief was palpable. Man, I thought I lost it for good. He hugged the console like it was a long-lost friend. And look at this, he said, showing me his phone. My accounts are back. Must have been some glitch. I nodded, smiling. Weird how these things happen, huh? Yeah, he replied, a thoughtful look on his face. You know, this week has been hell without my stuff made me realize how much time I waste on them. I raised an eyebrow. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's good to have them back, but maybe I need to cut down a bit. Be more present, you know? I couldn't believe my ears. Was this the same Alex who shrugged off every responsibility? Sounds like a plan, I said, trying to sound nonchalant while inside. I was doing a victory dance. It was a small step, but a significant one. Alex was finally starting to understand the value of things and the consequences of his actions. My plan had worked, but the journey wasn't over yet. There were more lessons to be taught, more responsibilities to be understood. After returning Alex's console and restoring his social media accounts, I knew I had to step up my game. It was time to really drive the lesson home. I decided to target something bigger, Alex's car. Remember how he loved that thing? I planned to make it disappear for a while to really make him feel the burn of loss and frustration. So I enlisted the help of Mike, Alex's friend, who had already helped me with the canceled trip. Mike had access to Alex's spare car key. He was hesitant at first, but I convinced him it was for Alex's own good. One evening, while Alex was asleep, I snuck the key from his room and drove the car to a friend's garage on the outskirts of town. The perfect hiding spot. The next morning, I waited for the show to begin. Where the hell is my car? Alex's voice boomed from outside. I peeked through the window, watching him search frantically. It was right here. I always park it right here. His panic was palpable. He took out his phone, probably to call one of his friends or maybe the police. I had to intervene before it went too far. Lost something? He spun around, phone in hand. My car's gone. I think it's been stolen. That's terrible, I said, trying to sound sympathetic. Did you call the police? He nodded, his face a mix of anger and confusion. I'm about to. This is insane. I need that car for work. Ah, the sweet irony. Over the next few days, Alex was a mess. He borrowed my car to get to work, complaining constantly about the inconvenience. I hid my smirks, offering bland sympathy. But then something changed. Alex started waking up earlier to catch the bus. He even started planning his days more efficiently to accommodate the longer commute. One evening... Over a hastily prepared dinner, he brought it up. You know, this bus thing isn't that bad. I've been saving a ton on gas. I nearly dropped my fork. Really? That's great. Yeah. And I've had time to think, you know. About things. Responsibility. I guess I took the car for granted.
I stared at him, my plan working better than I'd hoped. Alex was actually learning something, but the real test was yet to come. After a week, I decided it was time to find his car. I called the police and gave them an anonymous tip about a car matching Alex's description in a garage on the outskirts. They found it, untouched and unharmed. Alex was overjoyed, but something was different. He was more careful, more appreciative of his belongings. It was a turning point for him. He started taking responsibility, not just for his belongings, but for his actions too. He even started helping around the house without being asked. And I found us having actual conversations, not just arguments. The brother I always wanted was finally emerging. It was a hard lesson, but one that needed to be learned. The weeks following my little lessons saw a changed Alex. It was like watching a caterpillar turn into a butterfly, except with more grumbling and less grace. One evening I was in the living room, curled up with a book, when Alex walked in. He had a look on his face I couldn't quite read. Hey, I've been thinking about the car, the console, and all that. I... I want to apologize. I was wrong. I looked up, my expression neutral. An apology? Now? He nodded, shifting uncomfortably. Yeah, I know it's late, but I mean it. I've been a jerk. I took your things for granted and... I'm sorry. I closed my book, considering his words. Alex, it's not just about saying sorry. It's about understanding the impact of your actions. You left me without a car and you didn't care. I know. And I regret that. It won't happen again, I promise. His words were sincere. A far cry from his usual carefree attitude. It was clear he'd learned something. But for me, it wasn't enough to just accept his apology and move on. I appreciate your apology, Alex. But I can't just forget what happened. Actions have consequences. You need to remember that. He looked down, a frown creasing his forehead. I get it, and I'll prove it to you. I'll be better. That's all I ask. And just like that, we reached a sort of understanding. It wasn't the warm, fuzzy resolution you see in movies, but it was real. The following weeks were a testament to Alex's change. He was more considerate, chipping in with chores, even offering to run errands. He was becoming someone I could rely on. Someone I could call my brother. Not just a roommate who shared the same parents. As for me, I felt a strange mix of relief and empowerment. I'd stood up for myself, taught a hard lesson, and seen a real change. It wasn't easy, but it was worth it. Our relationship evolved. We started spending more time together, not just existing in the same space. We talked more about things that mattered. It was like building a bridge over a chasm that had been widening for years. You know, what you did? With the car, the console? It was a clever way to teach me a lesson. I needed that. Thank you. I smiled, a genuine warm smile. You're welcome, Alex. Just remember, I won't always be around to teach you these lessons. You've got to make the right choices on your own. I know, and I will. I've learned my lesson, and I believed him. That's where our story ends, folks. A story of a towed car, a missing console, and a brother-sister relationship that went through the ringer but came out stronger. It's funny how life works, isn't it? As I end this story, I feel a sense of closure. I taught Alex a valuable lesson, but in the process, I learned a lot too. About strength, perseverance, and the importance of standing up for what's right. Thanks for sticking with me through this journey. If you liked this story, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more. Who knows what's next on my list? Remember, actions have consequences, but they also have the power to change. Keep that in mind. Hey everyone, now that we've wrapped up our story, I have a thought-provoking question for you. In the story, Hannah takes a bold approach to teach her brother Alex a lesson about responsibility and consequences. She orchestrates scenarios where Alex loses his valued possessions, mirroring the frustration and inconvenience she experienced. This brings us to a crucial question. Was Hannah's method of teaching Alex a lesson the right approach? Could she have achieved the same outcome through less drastic measures? Or was her approach necessary to really get the point across? I'm eager to hear your thoughts on this. Did Hannah cross a line in her quest for justice? Or do you feel her actions were completely justified given Alex's behavior? Your opinions on this could really spark some interesting discussions. Also, as we close this chapter, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Your engagement not only supports the channel, 
but also fuels our community with diverse viewpoints. So, drop your thoughts in the comments, like, subscribe, and let's keep this conversation going. Can't wait to see what you all think.